Welcome to Cook Like an Auntie, where we prove that you don't have to be an auntie to make delicious Indian food. In cold climates, you have to be very careful how you prepare the dosa batter so it'll ferment properly. I'll go over the steps to make pakka idli dosa batter in cold climates. By the way, every cooking utensil I use in this video will be linked in the description box below, so if you need to get something, you can take a look at the links. Start by putting half a cup of orad dal, or skinless split black lentils as they are called in English, in a bowl. Wash them off two or three times. Don't overwash the dal as this sometimes harms fermentation. After washing, add a teaspoon of fenugreek seeds, or methi seeds as they're called in Hindi, to the orad dal. Then put a cup and a half of rice in a separate bowl and wash it off until the water is clear. I use idli rice, which is a short grain rice because it creates fluffier idlis and dosas, but you can stick with plain white rice. Now add one cup of water to the urad dal and fenugreek bowl. Also add two cups of water to the white rice bowl. Cover both with a plate. We are going to let the urad dal and rice soak for at least four hours. I usually let them soak overnight. Use filtered water for soaking because you want to remove any impurities that could harm fermentation. Now that you let the urad dal and rice soak, first you want to add the urad dal to the grinder with the soaking water. Go ahead and let it grind for about 10 minutes, maybe even more. Wipe down the sides of the grinder from time to time to make sure everything is incorporated into the batter. I don't recommend using an American blender for idli dosa batter. I tried for many years to make good idli and dosa batter with a blender, but it never worked. One of the reasons is that a blender cuts the grains, while a dosa grinder, as the name implies, grinds the grains. Cutting the grains isn't as helpful for fermentation. Also, a blender will heat up the grains, and if the grains get too hot, it'll kill the beneficial bacteria that causes fermentation. A dosa grinder doesn't heat up the batter, so that bacteria will have a better chance of uh, continuing until the fermentation process begins. The grinder I'm using is my in-law's old dosa grinder. After I got a dosa grinder, my dosa batter fermented better for all the reasons I just said. I have a link in the description for a newer model of dosa grinder, which is the one that my parents use for dosa, idli, vada, and many other South Indian recipes. They are expensive, but well worth the price if you plan to make South Indian food for your family and friends. Back to the batter. Add a little bit of batter to a bowl of water. If the batter floats, you're at the right consistency. If the batter sinks, add a little bit more water at a time and continue grinding. Then test if the batter floats again. The batter floating is one of the keys to getting fluffy idlis. The texture reminds me of shaving cream. When you push your hand into the batter, it'll push back at you a little bit. It'll also be very smooth. If you feel any grains in the batter, keep grinding. Once the uridal is fluffy, transfer it to a large bowl. Then add the rice without the soaking water to the grinder. You want to discard the rice's soaking water because you can always add water later if needed, but you can't take it out, and that will create flat idlis. Add about a quarter cup of water slowly and grind the rice. Grind the rice into a batter for about 10 minutes. Again, carefully wipe down the sides every few minutes. The batter will get a grainy texture now that the rice is in it, so it will not be as smooth as the urad dal batter. Keep adding water until the rice batter has the texture of about whole milk. Now that you made the rice batter, transfer it to the large bowl that the urad dal is in. The batter can double in size, so use a bowl twice as large as the combined urad dal and rice batters. Aunties say to use your hand to mix the batters together. They say that the bacteria from your hand will aid in fermentation. And even though that is disgusting to think about, there is some truth to it. Wash your hands before mixing the batter, of course. But I think the reason your hand aids fermentation is because your body temperature will help raise the temperature of the batter. 
Dosa ferments well around 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So your body temperature will bring the batter up from room temperature to something closer to that ideal fermentation temperature. Also, many recipes say to add salt at this point. In cold climates, we don't want to add salt now. The salt will slow down fermentation, so wait until after we ferment the batter and then add salt. Many aunties in the U.S. say to put the batter in an oven that's turned off, but with the oven light on. They say that that will provide enough temperature to help the dosa batter ferment. I've given that a try and I can get my dosa batter to ferment after maybe 12 hours doing that, but I prefer to use an Instant Pot. Pour the batter into the Instant Pot's included bowl, then close the lid. Then select the yogurt setting. The yogurt setting will bring the batter up to the 105 degrees Fahrenheit, which is ideal for fermentation. I'm going to set my time at eight hours, and I can add more time if I need it later or check on it earlier. After a few hours, you can check the batter. You'll know fermentation occurred if you see bubbles in the batter and condensation on the lid of the Instant Pot. There's also a strong dosa smell from the bowl that's sort of similar to the smell of yogurt. If your parents made dosa at home, you'll recognize the unmistakable smell of the dosa. You can use this batter to make idli, dosa, and uttapam. Traditionally, fresh batter is used for idli because the idlis will come out fluffiest on the first day. Then dosa is preferred after the batter flattens. Finally, my mom says that uthapam is usually made from leftover dosa batter, although I haven't found any specific sources saying that. Uh, maybe that's just what her mom would do, passing down traditions from one auntie to another. If you want to make idlis, you'll need idli molds and something to steam them in. Add oil or ghee to the bottom of each mold, then pour the batter to fill about 75% of the mold. Steam the idlis for 12 minutes. You can use the same test you use for baking brownies to see if the idlis are done. Stick a toothpick into the idli. If the toothpick comes out clean, your idlis are done. Then use a flexible spatula or plastic knife to scoop the idlis out of the molds. There's nothing wrong with making dosa from fresh batter, as many restaurants do it. Or you can use the leftover idli batter, as I said before. Use a flat pan, like the one you'd use to make pancakes or crepes. Add a little oil or ghee to the pan, and then use a ladle to pour the dosa. We could talk about how to make round dosas, but that's a video for another day. Aunties and uncles, for now, will be very impressed that you're making dosa from scratch. Once the edges of the dosa dry out, that's when you can flip it. It's honestly very similar to making a thin pancake once the batter is made. Finally, you can make uttapam with this batter. Pour the batter onto the flat pan, thicker than you would a dosa, and add vegetables to it. Otherwise, it's going to be very similar to making dosa. Let me know if you want chutney and sambar recipes so you can eat them alongside your idlis and dosas. To summarize the important differences making dosa batter in cold climates, don't overwash the dal or fenugreek seeds. Use filtered water for soaking. Use an Indian dosa grinder, use your hand to mix the batter, and use an Instant Pot to ferment. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you learn to cook like an auntie. Aparamapakalam, birmalenge, see you next time.